Hey everyone, Nick Dierbertis here teaching you financial modeling. And today we're going to talk about skills to build out a more advanced Excel model. And this is part of our segment on the depth of a financial model and extending a simple retirement model in Excel. Uh, so in the prior videos, uh, we talked about this simple retirement model and how we're going to add this assumption to it that the salary um, should grow with promotions as well as cost of living raises. So now let's look at some skills that we need to build out the Excel model for this. Um, so one thing that uh, we need to pay a lot of attention to now uh, that this is going to be a bit larger Excel model is we have to pay a lot of attention to the structure and organization of the model. Uh, with Excel, you can very quickly uh, get into a spot where it's very difficult to understand how everything flows through the model, where your inputs, where your outputs, where does that, where does one calculation go to the next? Um, since it's all very free form and you can kind of put anything anywhere um, as far as the layout, um, then it's not very clear as someone just coming into the model. Um, you know, how everything flows through, unless you take the time to structure it very well so that it's easy for any uh, consumer of your model or someone who's gonna come and work on your model later, uh, which may even be you, you know, later down the road after you haven't worked on it for a while. Um, this structure is very helpful for that. Um, so the structure that I'm talking about um, you know, is a little bit what we've talked about before in that you wanna have clear separation of your inputs and outputs. That's the biggest thing is, you know, you have to know what is the coming into the model, what can the, the user of the model change around as the inputs, and what are the main outputs from the model and having those presented in a clear way. Um, and that's true for any Excel model, you should have that uh, but as we get to a larger model, we also need to think about, you know, basically, we're not just doing one single calculation anymore. Um, in a larger model, there's going to be really multiple different sub problems that you're solving as part of the larger problem. Um, and so we want to take break it down into these sub problems, and we can put each of these sub problems on its own sheet of the Excel model. Um, and then each sheet uh, we can kind of treat as its own mini sub model. And within that sheet, you should have the inputs going into that calculation. You should have the outputs from that calculation clearly separated. Um, and then you should have an overview page for the model, which has all the inputs and the main outputs from the model. And everything should be linked together all through the different sheets. And this is the way that you can stay very organized, even with a larger Excel model. Um, so that's the structure. Now let's look at a few different uh, functions that we're going to use to actually build out this dynamic salary retirement model. So um, conditionals are very important in financial modeling as well as general programming. Um, you know, if something is true, then you wanna do something or get some value. Um, and so we have the if function in Excel, which accomplishes that. Uh, we can also use that in combination with other logical operators like and and or, you know, and, so we can look at multiple different conditions add once in a single if statement. Um, and let's look at some examples of how this works at Excel. So looking at how we would actually call the if function, uh, you know, first we have uh, our logical test. So that's the condition that we want to determine whether it's true or false. Um, and so in my first example here, I have if five equals five, five does equal five, that's true. Um, and so uh, we're going to go into then the value if true. And so that's why uh, here, second argument, we have the value if true. And third, we have the value if false. 
Um, and so what this function is doing is just if this condition is true, then it's going to give you this value. If it is false, then it's going to give you the other value. And so that's why this call here, uh, if five equals five, it does, it's gonna give you this. Uh, but then if we called it again, if four equals five, of course it does not, that's false, uh, then it's going to give us that. It's gonna give us the other value here, the value of false. Um, and so this if command is basically just allows us to choose from two different values based on some kind of condition. And we'll definitely look at the applications of that as we go to build out the model. Then uh, modulo is another uh, function or, or concept which is used a lot in general programming. Um, it's you know probably not going to come up in you know just everyday financial modeling, but it is I think very useful to build out this specific problem that we're looking at, uh, where we have the promotions coming every uh, number of years, uh, the modulo is helpful to uh, work with that. So the modulo uh, is basically just the remainder of doing division. Um, and so, you know, if you do think about three divided by four, what's the remainder? Uh, the remainder is three. Um, and so that's what uh, this mod function is doing, is just giving you the remainder of a division uh, and then if you think you know seven over two what's the remainder of that uh, that becomes uh, three and one half and so one is the remainder from that um, so it's just giving us the remainder and this is going to be useful for seeing you know how many years we have left until the promotion and then uh, the other function we're looking at uh, to help us build out this model beyond, you know, the basic ones that I would expect you to know just coming into the class is VLOOKUP. So VLOOKUP uh, is a little bit more advanced and it helps you find things in a table uh, by the row. So we can look at uh, an example here. Uh, we have a little table of, uh, you know, four different um, foods here and then in the second column we have the food group that that food belongs to it's either a vegetable or a fruit so uh, with VLOOKUP we can say you know we know we want to figure out uh, whether celery is a fruit or a vegetable um, and so we can pass celery to VLOOKUP and we give it the range of the table and then we say we want to look up the value from the second column and then that's going to give us vegetable um, so um, that's the basic idea you're just looking up a certain columns value by uh, the first columns rows value um, is how VLOOKUP works um, and the lookup, it does have to be the first column of the table, or at least the, you know, the range that you're targeting here. Um, and you do have to sort the items in ascending order uh, in order to ensure that you're gonna get the correct lookup. So those are the two kind of gotchas with using VLOOKUP. Um, but basically, you know, you're just looking up something in a table, uh, by the first column's value. So those are all the additional skills um, and, and patterns that we're thinking about as we go into building this more advanced dynamic salary Excel model. Next uh, video, we're gonna come back and actually build out that model. So thanks for listening and see you next time.